This is where we left off. If I use direct substitution here, I get zero over zero, which is an indeterminate form. But this is a rational function. So maybe I can use that dividing out technique. Let's see. This is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, well, I could factor out an h here and be left with six plus h over h. And by doing this, I can divide out or cancel the h's. So remember that I can do that because the graphs of the original and the one with cancellations are exactly the same, except one small difference. One has a hole and the other doesn't. Now this surviving function does not have a hole. And now I can use direct substitution six plus zero gives me six. And that is the answer. That's the limit. Find a limit from calculus. Oh boy, can you smell it? I can smell it. We're getting we're getting ready to finish pre-calculus and we're heading now into calculus. They're giving us problems straight out of calculus now. For the function, f of x equals x squared minus one, find the limit of f of three plus h minus f of three over h as h goes to zero. Well, we first have to find f of three plus h. f of three plus h is, well, if this is f of x, that means wherever I see an x, I'm gonna put x. f of three plus h says, take my input and square it minus one. My input and square it and minus one. So f of three plus h is three plus h squared minus one. So we first have to take care of this part. What is three, f of three plus h? Here's the rule, easy to find f of three plus h, which of course is three plus h times three plus h minus one. Now we can FOIL that. I just expanded that part to get there. First nine outer, plus three h inner, plus three h last, plus h squared minus one, which simplifies to, we have nine minus one is eight plus three h plus h squared. So I took care of this part right here. I know what that is. F of three, well, that's not so hard either. If f of x is x squared plus one, I'm going to take my input squared and minus one. So f of three is nine minus one or eight. So this problem becomes limit as h approaches zero of f of three plus h was this. That is eight plus three h plus h squared minus, well, f of three, we found that was eight all over h. If the eights have been good little numbers, they go off to number heaven to leave us with the limit as h approaches zero of three h plus h squared. I'm sorry, that's gonna give us six, right? My fault. That's gonna give us six h here. Sorry about that. So that gives us this all over h. And if I use now direct substitution here and here and here, I get zero over zero which we know is an indeterminate form. Oh, sugar, we better have a backup plan. Just a note, for any x value, the limit of the difference quotient is an expression of the form. Well, let's look what's happening. If I have a graph like that, there's my graph, and here is x, and this distance here is h, then this x coordinate will be x plus h. And here is the point x comma f of x, if I say that this function is f of x. And here is the point, stick with me, x plus h comma the function value at x plus h. Now, what are we doing? We're taking the limit as h approaches zero. And what is h? That's the difference between x and x plus h. As this shrinks, this point comes closer and closer to this point. And what we're saying here is for any, any, any value of x, 
when I use direct substitution, and I'm going to get, this will become f of x plus h as x as h goes to zero becomes f of x plus zero, which is simply f of x minus f of x divided by, if h is going to zero, I get zero, which is going to give us zero over zero or the indeterminate form for any x. And by the way, usually this is the picture that starts calculus and that's sort of where my teaching ends if we were in a pre-calculus course with me. And this is exactly where we pick up when we study calculus, because you're gonna to start to look at the slope of this tangent line here, which is called the derivative. But that's a lesson for another day.